Mark is in where? Seattle, Mark? Yes, I am in Seattle, and I was <sighs> down at the Bernie Sanders rally uh, reporting on that event as an independent journalist. But I wanted to say a couple of things, Mike. But first, it's really good to talk to you. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Sure. And I want you to know that you are one of my mentors, so I hope... <laughs> oh, be careful. Heck, you don't go off the air because you've been an inspiration for so long. Well, no, you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, if, if, if for some reason we have to deal with uh, um, any Republican president or Hillary Clinton, then uh, I'm, I'm tired. I mean, I've had enough. It, it's at that point, Mark, uh, and we're talking 16 months from now, it's at that point that I bail out uh, and uh, leave it up to you, uh, you youngsters. I just, uh, I, I, look, you know, ever since 2008, re really since before that, since back in the battle days of Reagan, but really since December 8th, 2008, when, or 2000, when uh, uh, the uh, franchise of electing our leaders was taken from us by the U.S. Supreme Court and Bush and Cheney were installed. And uh, uh, since that time, if you look at the death and the destruction that has gone on on this planet since then and how Cheney created ISIS and Cheney created Al-Qaeda and Cheney created... Um, uh, or, or gave new life to the Taliban. And I, I, I mean, it's just, whew, uh, I, I just can't, I, I, I can't continue the struggle. And I figure if, uh, if the American voting public, whatever's left of it, uh, actually installs a Republican leader, then just write it all off. I, I, I don't know. You, you may still have some energy reserves, Mark. I don't. Well, I think it's definitely incumbent upon certain folks to pick up uh, and, and take off where you and a lot of other pioneers have, have taken us. I, I have to be honest, though, as uh, a U.S. journalist, which is, you know, what's happened to me. I mean, we have a new independent uh, news network called Democracy Watch News, which is all about pro-democracy movements and corruption. And, mm -hmm. and we, uh, a lot of us used to be activists, right? And we decided that, well, marching in the streets uh, hasn't been that successful for us, although as a reporter I still have to deal with flashbang grenades occasionally. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> we've gone on to to say a lot of people actually who were involved in the Occupy Wall Street movement said, you know, if anything good, and this is, I was one of them, if anything good comes out of this movement, it would be an influx of alternative and independent media. And this is what I'm facing as a U.S. journalist, and this is why it's difficult for me to be proud of my colleagues and to be proud of my profession, because we've talked about this before, about how Reporters Without Borders, an international advocacy group for right. the press, mm -hmm has ranked the United States as 47th in the world. Yeah. And we also have a, a group called Penn International, which is traditionally uh, an advocacy group for freedom of speech for writers all over the world. And they released a report saying that they found 52 instances of violations of freedom of the press, including about two dozen reporters who were arrested during the Ferguson protests. Right. So when you have police rounding up uh, reporters at protests and, you know, violating their freedom of the press and, for, you know, freedom of expression and not being able to report on these events, then you have a serious problem. So regardless of what's happening on the, on the larger political scene, I find as a journalist, it's getting more and more difficult to do your job in this country. Mm -hmm. And so that's been one of the main issues that I've really tried to um, advocate for. And there are a lot of really great groups around the world and around the country, the Committee to Protect Journalists, uh, Reporters Without Borders. Right. Um, there's also a group called Reporters Committee uh, to Protect Freedom of Speech mm -hmm. or Freedom of the Press. And so, you know, unfortunately, the, I don't find that the Society for Professional Journalism is doing such a great job at dealing with these issues. No. Nor is the corporate media, because like I've written many times before at Daily Coast and other places, they consider it the cost of doing business, so they don't tend to file lawsuits. Mm. Um, however, after one of the Seattle Times reporters was seriously burned and injured by a, a grenade 
during the May Day protests that might start to change. But it, it's an issue. But I feel like I'm going to continue to work with independent media and try to do something more authentic and real and go to the sources instead of talking heads and try to avoid all of the hype and media spin that um, that people are subjected to in this country. You know, I was with Free Speech Radio News on Pacifica Network for six years, and we demanded editorial independence from the network, which is one of the reasons why they cut our funding and we are no longer on the air. But that was a great effort, and that's the kind of authentic journalism I like, where you have people who are are literally embedded in the community they're reporting about. It's not some associated press reporter or New York Times reporter sent from New York to cover the story. Right. And that kind of citizen journalism is really, really important. And uh-huh. it did become important here in Seattle when Bernie Sanders had his rally because a lot of the mainstream media reporting in the first 24 hours, which was typical, was not completely accurate, nor did it include a lot of the details that people should know about, mm-hmm. including the fact that that rally at Westlake, Westlake Park was actually an anniversary celebration for the birth of Social Security. Right, exactly. 80, 80, what was it? 80-year 80, 80 anniversary, I believe, wasn't it? Yes, and it happened to coincide with the anniversary of Michael Liberation, and they had a five-tiered cake and handed out cake to the crowd mm-hmm. and had a lot of other speakers... Um, Shama Swan, our city council member, spoke there about, you know, trying to protect Social Security and how we need to build a, some kind of alternative political parties that actually represent the 99%. Mm-hmm. So it was not a Bernie Sanders rally. The rally that he spoke out later had about 15,000 people at Heck and Linton Pavilion. So he had a, plenty of opportunities that day to reach out to the community and talk to people in Seattle about um, what he's saying about, you know, national politics and well that's that you know, you know mark that that's good to know uh, that's the first I, I i understood as a matter of fact i saw a couple of uh uh, uh lines perhaps in reporting on on what happened with the black lives matter uh two women and sanders uh, that it was a celebration for Social Security, but I didn't make the connection that Sanders was just uh, one of many speakers that day. So I'm 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 glad to I'm, I'm I'm thankful to have the clarification from you. There's a couple other salient facts that people should probably know too, which is that uh, first of all, although Marissa Johnson was uh, I believe the first activist to get up on the stage and and take the mic. Um, she is a well-known activist in the Seattle area, has been very, very outspoken about issues of racism and the prison industrial system, and has, that's not the first time that she's disrupted, um, uh, you know, city official meetings and things like that. So uh, she's actually, although, although she's been associated with the Black Lives Matter movement, she is actually a member of another group called Outside Agitators 206. And I'm assuming... You yeah, know, that's the... the Because that's our area code. Right? Yeah, that's the OA-206 that got uh, uh, got the uh, publicity um, um, that, that that was actually her, the, the organization to which she was really attached, not Black Lives Matter. And I, Correct. I, I wasn't sure what OA stood for, so thanks for the enlightenment there. Mark, I, had, I hate to tell you this, but I've got to move on. Yes, well, let's talk again about this issue okay. because I think it's important. I think it is. controversy over at Daily Coast about this, too. So Yeah, I, 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 that's a good idea. Mark Taylor Canfield in uh, Seattle. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate you checking in with me. Absolutely. <clears throat> OA-206, outside agitator and the area code for Seattle. Okay, well, that, you know, that makes sense, right? Um. Yeah, I, I knew there was a tie-in with the 80th anniversary of, of, of the advent of Social Security. But I, like so many Americans, I'm sure, as a matter of fact, when I talked about it that night, I built my uh, complaints about it. My uh, And you know me when I 